Okay, so I wanted to share this. Uh, I wasn't going to do it on live just because uh, it would probably get cut off, so I'll do it here. Like this. Among the people of the Vedian civilization, Throughout the millennia of its existence, there was not a single robbery, theft, or simple fistfight. Insulting words were even absent from their lexicon. At the same time, there were no laws punishing such actions. Laws can never ward off evil deeds, but the Vades knowledge and culture did not allow for conflicts between people. Judge for yourself. After all, each family living on his own homestead knew that if any unpleasantness arose with anyone, even an outsider, on the homestead itself or nearby, even at the edge of the settlement, the entire dimension would suffer. The universal energy of aggression would affect what grew and everything that lived in it. The balance of energies would change. The energy of aggression can grow, reflect back on adults and children, and strike posterity with illness. On the contrary, if a passing traveler left a joyous feeling, the dimension would radiate even more beauty. In addition, the person who came to the settlement would be physically incapable of eating a fruit he had picked or picked up in a garden that belonged to someone else. The Vedian people had a high sensitivity. Their organism could immediately sense and a significant difference when it tasted a fruit picked without leaves and a fruit offered by a kind hand. It is today in modern stores that food often does not have the smell and taste of the primordial product. It is soulless and indifferent to man. It is no one's and is given to no one. It is venal. If modern man could try and compare the food there was in the Vedian period, he would not be able to eat modern products. A stranger could not even contemplate taking something that was someone else's without asking. Any object, even a stone, contains information, and only the family living on the homestead knew what kind. Each homestead of the Vedian civilization was impregnable was an impregnable fortress against everything malicious. At the same time was a maternal womb for the family living on it. No one built high fortress walls. The homestead territory was marked off by a living green fence. Both this fence and everything growing behind it safeguarded the family against all phenomena negative to the human flesh and soul. I have already told you about how relatives buried the bodies of the deceased only in their garden or the homestead's woods. These people knew that the human soul is eternal, but even material bodies cannot vanish without a trace. Each object, even an out outwardly soulless one, bears quite a lot of universal information. Nothing disappears into nothingness in divine nature. It merely changes its state and flesh. The bodies of the deceased 
were not covered with stone slabs, and even the place of their burial was not marked in any way. The dimension created by their hand and heart served as a great monument to them, while changing their state. The now soulless bodies nurtured trees, grasses, and flowers. The children born walked among them. Oh, how everything around loved the children. The spirit of their ancestor, ancestors hovered above the dimension, loving and safeguarding the children. Children treated the dimension of their homeland with love. Their thought did not create the illusion of life's finiteness. The Vade's life is infinite. The soul soared through all the universal dimensions. And after visiting various planes of being, was reincarnated in human guise. Waking up, a child would smile once again in the garden in his homeland. The entire dimension would respond to him with a smile. The sunbeam, the breeze rustling the leaves, the flower, and the distant star would exhale ecstatically. We are united, embodied by you, child of divine being. Today, the requests of elderly people living in foreign lands are considered inexplicable. When I die, bury me in my homeland. Intuitively, these people sense that their homeland is capable of returning them to the earth in a heavenly garden. A foreign land rejects their souls. People strive to bury their bodies in their homeland. For millennia, their souls have asked for this. But how can one call a cemetery one's homeland, no matter what country it is in? Cemeteries arose quite f recently for the purpose of tormenting human souls with hell demeaning them, enslaving them, forcing them to worship. Cemeteries resemble... They are like vacant lots where people dump their unwanted junk. The souls of the dead suffer above the cemetery. The living fear cemeteries. Imagine a homestead of those times. The bodies of many generations are buried there. Each living blade of grass tries to caress and be useful for man's flesh and soul. For anyone who comes with aggression, each blade of grass and each fruit in the garden suddenly become poisonous. Supremely potent. This is why it never even occurred to anyone to take anything without leave. A homestead could not be seized by force. It could not be bought for any money. Who is going to encroach upon something that is capable of destroying the encroacher? Each was trying himself to create his own beautiful oasis. The planet grew prettier with each, with each passing year. When man casts his gaze over the modern city from high above, what does he see? Piles of artificial stones cover the earth. Buildings rise up and out. The stone landscape covers greater and greater expanses. Now here, now there. It contains no clean water and the air is polluted. How many happy families live amid these stone husk hulks? Comparing modern families with a family of the Vedian culture, then not a single one. One can say even more. 
human families are not living amid the stone artificial hulks. They are sleeping in their hypnotic sleep. One single living cell nonetheless roams through their body like a seed. It falls still, then races, touching thousands and thousands of others. The living cell keeps trying to awaken the sleeping ones, and it is called the waking dream. It will awaken them. Then human families will begin creating beautiful oases on earth. As before, so shall it be again. If one were to look at the earth from high above, one's gaze would be enchanted by many vibrant scenes. And each beautiful scene would mean that in this place, the hand of an awakened fade had touched the earth. Once again, a happily, a hap, a happily family of people would live in their homestead, in their homeland. People who knew God and the meaning of purpose of life. The Vades knew why there were stars in the sky. Among them were many great poets and artists. No hostility existed between the settlements. There was no reason for theft or plunder. Bureaucracies were unknown structures. Vedrusian culture flourished where the modern countries of Europe, India, Egypt, and China are today. And there were no boundaries between the different territories. There were no rulers, great or small. The sequence of great holidays was the natural government. People of the Vedian period possessed knowledge of the world order in immeasurably more detail than modern man does. Their internal energy allowed them to speed up the growth of some plants and slow down others. Domestic animals strove to carry out man's commands, not in order to get food, of which there was an abundance. Rather, they wanted to be rewarded by man's beneficial energy, the attention, the awareness, the love reflected. Even now, Man's praise is pleasant to everyone, to man, to animal, to plant, beneficial. Previously, however, people's energy was immeasurably greater, and everything strove toward it, as if towards the sun.